Hey everybody. So, um, I have been curious about this. Um, I have here three of the top uh, AI writing tools that I've found for, um, for, for TTRPGs, right? Tabletop RPGs. And um, I think that so I've been wanting to do this kind of experiment and see which one I think is the most useful. And I kind of had these set up like how I think this is going to go, like third place, second place, first place, but I'm not sure, right? So I want to experiment with it. So what I did was I paid for like the, the premium version of each one of these um, and they vary in price. So right here we have pseudo right is the is um, I would say if this were a competent if this were about writing novels, pseudo right would be hands down the winner because pseudo right is really, really good for writing books, for writing novels, for writing um, like RPG kind of format content where you don't have set characters, you don't have um, like you know the the players have agency. It isn't just a story where you're you know reading like telling the players what happens to them. It's I th I think that this one is going to be in third place, but we're going to try some things, right? Um, so this is I want to say this is like it's like ten dollars a month. Um, if you buy a plan, it's like $15 monthly if you just go monthly. And then it's like $10 if you do the year thing. Um, so uh, ChatGPT, right? The most expensive out of all of them. Um, ChatGPT, I, I have been using the, the free version, the 3.5 version for a long time. And it's great. You know, I've never really felt the need to upgrade before, but I want to see, I want to see what what we can do with the 4.0 version. You know, it gives you access to to more more things, more more tools, including like AI art, um, and I kind of want to see what happens. Like if we can get it to sort of generate a character for us, and then maybe generate a portrait for that character. Um, so, and then we have my e Notion, right? And if you watch my channel, you'd know that I love Notion. I use Notion constantly. Um, you know, I've been using it for years and they do have AI tools and their AI tools are pretty robust. Um, but we're going to check, we're going to try it for writing right for um for specifically for like ttrpg stuff right so um in my notion um i have basically a campaign seed right like a storyline and i decided that i want to run this in traveler so i want to use the 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 traveler game engine and but it's going to be my own setting kind of my own sci-fi world, you know, universe. Um, but we're going to use the Traveler engine. So I have my little synopsis here. I have my little blurb. Um, so I'm going to take this, right? And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it into, um, into pseudo write, right? And we're going to do this with each one. We're going to do um, a. Uh, we're going to do a. Um, to like plug these, plug this little story seed, story seed thing into each one of these, and then we're going to see what it spits out, right? get rid of these hot links these these notion hot links um so i have my like my my story beats here right 
So what I'm going to use, oh, actually, this, this belongs in brain dump. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put it into brain dump. And then, you know, this is, th this is amazing. Pseudowrite is fantastic for writing novels, right? If I wanted to make this a novel, I would say pseudodom, I mean, pseudowrite runs, wins hands down. Like it's just the best for writing novels, right? So I've got my story seed here, and then um, I'm gonna put genre is sci-fi tabletop role playing game. And um, so I'll just read this to you really quick. Um, Once a prosperous mining colony during the time of the great expansion, a gold rush of sorts brought miners from all over the, to find their fortune on LVCOMI-1007 or, or Hemsit, a rocky, barren, unhospitable, cold world in Union space with only one trace level atmosphere and high gravity where any walk on the surface would require a vac suit, but also promising untold riches. Um, Greenville Arcology. And this is our setting or where the players kind of start out. Um, a modern marvel of self-insufficiency, combining geothermal taps, solar panels, wind turbines, aquaponics, fungiculture, and high-tech manufacturing sprung up over one especially rich rare earth minerals mine. But there was that was before the fall of the hegemony, and the arcology is now over 300 years old and in desperate need of repairs and is currently in the throes of a deep recession. With only a minimal uni Union Navy presence and a sort of Wild West capitalism, anything goes atmosphere. A brutal management versus labor struggle has ensued. The mines have been taken over by organized crime, Union gangs, and the OPA, One People's Army, even threatening to break away from the Union space, and the security forces are fighting a losing war against them. Management's solution has been to ration the oxygen and power to areas that are too out of control and to enforce a brutal totalitarian police state on anyone that resists. The police are more feared than any gang. Explosions and earthquakes have recently started to rock the foundations of the arcology, though, and not like the controlled mining demolitions that people have been become accustomed to and what management would have them believe is happening. What is happening in the twisted mining tunnels under the arcology and that have been carved out over hundreds of years is the arcology's geothermal tap going to erupt and swallow everyone? Is the OPA waging a full-scale war? No one knows. There is no law or, or, or rules except for what the gangs decide down there. You and your crew have decided to get off this rock before things go off like a powder keg. The first step is to acquire a ship. So it's going to be very inspired by, like, the expanse. Um but also kind of like 80s sci-fi stuff like movies like um outland with sean connery or and then i'm gonna have i i want to sort of tie it in with like the shared kind of blade runner outland alien universe like there are going to be ancient aliens who are sort of like the engineers um, and then there's evidence of their them messing with things like in the background that's happening all over. Like there's going to be an ancient gate system that was built by the ancients that, that that's my MacGuffin for how people travel from star system to star system is by using this gate network that was set up by the ancients, right? So if I plug my, my little blurb into here, right, and I put that into brain dump, Basically, um, Brain Dump is just a a place where you kind of put some of your um, your ideas, right? And then PseudoWrite is going to help you to um, to to fill that out, you know, to to turn it into a novel, right? So I can tell it to do. Um, match my style and uh, and then it will sort of like figure out 
what my writing style is and then um, is, to make a like a prompt, you know, like a style, a writing style. Uh, so it says, okay, bleak and technical tone with vivid descriptions, slow pacing builds tension with uneven rhythm, sparse but impactful dialogue characterizes functions, themes of survival, desperation, and power struggle in a lot of society with motifs of harshness. Okay, great, perfect. Um, and then, um, so let's see. What I wanted to do though, right, is because what it's going to want to, what it really, really wants to do is it wants characters. It wants you to give it characters to chew on so that it can give them some dialogue. And then, you know, like if we, if we go down here and then we say generate characters, it's going to um, come up with some people that sort of fit in with the setting, right? So, you know, this is good stuff. This is all great stuff. But the problem is getting it to move away from writing a novel and then doing things that focus more on describing scenes, um, describing, or, or sorry, describing like architecture, you know, like what does it look like in these mines? What does it look like in the arcology? You know, what, what kinds of things might happen if we're walking through a shopping mall inside this arcology, right? So it's, it's generated some characters. Um, let's just look at one of these. Uh, Lucas Edwards, a thoughtful and introverted protagonist, Lucas has a strong sense of responsibility and loyalty towards his friends and family. He usually avoids conflict and prefers to find peaceful solutions to problems. He has short, dark hair and a tall, lean build. After experiencing a life-changing event, he becomes more cautious and slow to trust others, often double-checking his surroundings. Um, so yeah, I mean, none of these are explicitly kind of sci-fi, but I think that that's, you know, that's good. Like we can go in here and then we can say, um, Lucas works, uh, in the mines. Um, he is a, they say that he's a, a uh, robot uh, repair specialist, and um, he uh, he's he's kind of like a a little bit of a loner. You know, he likes being alone, working on robots and drones and stuff like that, like in the mines, and uh, yeah. So um, so we can start kind of building on these characters and, and plugging more stuff into here. And, you know, like, like I keep saying, if this was a novel, pseudo write, just fantastic. Um, but one thing that I want to do, right, is I'm going to go, I'm going to back out to my notion and then I'm going to go down to um, pseudo write for D and D. This is something, this is a, a page that, somebody recommended to me on the, um, <clears throat> sorry, a little throat thing. Uh, this is a, a pseudo, a, a notion page that somebody recommended to me on the discord, on the, the pseudo right discord, right? So here's how they use pseudo right for D and D, right? So they're gonna they're gonna go into brainstorm, and then go into something else, and then they're gonna d fill in some of these forms with um, uh, context, right? So say that we want to go into uh, wait, hang on, yeah, brainstorm. We will go into brainstorm, and then we will. Um, we want to do world building. Uh, so give me a list of, um, let's see, electronics, goods, uh, manufactured in the 
topology and uh, context, we're going to go with um, I guess, um, well, sci fi. We'll go with bleak dis, uh, dystopian, dystopian sci-fi. Or I'll just spell it out, science fiction. Bleak dystopian science fiction. Okay. And then, um, and it should, um, no, I, I'll just I'll just read these. Let's see. The elect uh, electron, a handheld device that neutralizes the harmful radiation radiation emitted by the polluted air, allowing the users to breathe freely and without fear of sickness or disease. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Keep that one. Um, Smoke, a smoke blind, a device that creates a thick fog, making it easier for citizens to escape from the oppressive surveillance of the ruling class. So sure, I mean, smoke bombs, um, you know, eh, it's okay. Uh, the arc light converter, a gadget that converts human waste into electricity, perfect for power powering the arcology's lighting and appliances. I don't like that one. Um, retro chronological calculator powered by a miniature nuclear reactor. This device, no, is able to calculate and display the past and future. No, um, yeah, so okay, we've got uh. Glowworm's eye potion. No, I do, you know, like I want to get maybe a couple of these. Um, okay, trackers, talisman, equipped with advanced sensors and tracking capabilities. The small pendant allows the wearer to navigate the winding streets of the arcology and locate specific items or individuals. I think that's useful. I'm going to keep that. So we're just going to, you know, we're going to keep some of this stuff like we've got some uh goods manufactured in the arcology okay i've got a better one i've got a better idea we're gonna make um we're gonna use it to um bleak uh, dystopian Oh wait, I'll just go back to the one that we that we had before. I'll go back to this one. Can I? Can I just go back? Um and then we're just going to get oh, I want to say um so I know that inside the arcology, right? They they don't grow it's it's hard to grow crops. Say that there's a lot of stuff that gets imported like say that they if you know if you want beef or something like that or you know like maybe they have like a beef vat something that makes like something um that's like beef like but it's sort of grown um it's like they just grow stuff that's like protein um or like everything is made out of mushrooms right mushrooms and like soybeans or something like that um so we're gonna go with food products that are made from mushrooms and soybeans. We'll say highly processed. See what it comes up with. Soy gel, a highly processed soy based soy based gel that serves as a replacement for traditional meat and dairy products in the bleak dystopian society. 
where resources are scarce. It comes in various flavors and forms, from imitation burgers to, yes, that's, that's good. I like that. Okay, I don't know why it keeps trying to shove the glowworm's eye potion him down my throat, but... Okay, so um, that's that's good, right? Let's see what else. Um, describe monsters, places, and items, etc. Um, so I feel like this is where it kind of falls behind a little bit um, because you know this stuff is good right um let's try let's try a different look yeah i mean we could we could do that right we could get it to go through the same thing and then sort of generate some some places inside the arcology um but so what i what i want to do though is um and okay, well, so I'll show you. I'll show you what it wants to do, right? If we go through some of these other steps, right? Um, if we tell it to generate a synopsis, and then this is how uh, this is how pseudo write works, is that um, well, how it used to work. They've recently made some changes, but it goes on a word count. So you have a certain amount of words every month that you can chew through or that you, you know, you let pseudo write chew through. So it's going to come up with something, right? And then, so on the inhospitable world of LV, LV, so this is my planet naming convention. LV means life viable, cold world, CO cold world, mining intensive, 007, Hemsworth. It, once, yeah. So beacon of self-sufficiency, high-tech manufacturing. Uh, so the protagonists find themselves amidst the chaos with their crew, seeking a way off the troubled, a troubled planet before things spiral out of control. They know they need to require a ship to do so, but explosions and earthquakes start rocking the foundations of the arcology, causing panic among those who live and work there. It's not just controlled mining demolitions anymore. Something more sinister is at play. So I think it's it's kind of just improving on my synopsis or my little blurb a little bit and then kind of fleshing it out. And then what it's going to want to do is plug these characters in and then it's going to want to write a novel. And there's kind of like not really any way around that because it's so hardwired into what it does. Um, but these, you know, these are some good tools like generating characters. Um, just you know, like make me some characters that fit in with this world, right? And it keeps everything organized. That's definitely a huge plus. Because if I, you know, I can I can go into brain dump and then I can jump straight down to characters and then um you know it's it like I can I can cop I can copy these, you know, and then I can like uh I can put them into my uh my my notion you know like which is what i'm i'm going to be doing with this right um yeah it was in fear factory uh but so i you know i can i can easily keep all this stuff organized if i want to keep stuff organized though i'm going to put it in my notion because that's just like you know notion is is that's the this is like the best thing for for keeping things organized so i've got some characters and then i'm going to make a drop down in there probably make a table later um uh, yeah okay so i've i've, I've got these you know these characters that pseudo write generated and then i can like it, it wants to put you know it, it wants to fill this up with about 700 words so i can uh i can get rid of those and then i can tell it to make some more um 
and then it's just gonna you know it's gonna keep making more more characters right and then i can keep putting those into my notion and uh and that's you know that can be a good way to sort of like flesh out your world right so um but i want to try i want to try chat gpt um and then so here's here is why um here is why i think that chat gpt um and then so the the default uh chat gpt is 3.5 if you go into the free version you're using 3.5 um the the chat gpt was the most expensive out of all of these for the premium version because they they charge me 20 bucks a month which is kind of pricey i think for just an you know an ai um but i think here's here's why i think that chat gpt is probably going to come in in second place um so i'll show you how i how i use chat gpt right um so I'm going to say, I'm just going to plug that in, right? And then um, I'm going to say, um, edit. Can, uh, I wish you could just, I wish you could do, say, return, and then, you know, it would um, let you just, you know, like, say, just submit instead of having a return, and then it automatically generates a response. Can you help me to flesh out my sci-fi setting? So, okay, I've plugged in my synopsis, my little blurb, right? And then I just said, can you help me to, you know, flesh out my my sci-fi setting? And then it's going to sort of, it's going to start doing that. It's going to start chewing on what I gave it, right? So I'm just going to, I'm going to stop it and then start reading what it wrote. So your sci-fi setting on L.V. Hempstead with the Greenville Arcology present, presents a rich tapestry of conflict, survival, and exploration. Flesh out the world. Let's delve into various aspects that you can add depth and complexity to your narrative. History and infrastructure. Detail the arcology's history, including its founding, periods of prosperity and decline. Describe its architecture, the technology that once made it a paragon of self-sufficiency, and the systems that are now failing. Consider the socioeconomic divisions within its walls. From the luxurious upper levels to dilapidated lower sections where crime, crime thrives, um, explore the demographics, including miners, engineers, tech specialists, and their families. How have generations born and raised within the arcology come to view the world? Um, so you know it, it. It's done a fair amount, right? So um, if we go into behind the scenes. Uh, I'm just going to copy some of the stuff that I've already written and then plug that into ChatGPT of the non universe. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep feeding, I'm, I'm just going to keep giving it more information, you know, about my setting and stuff. Um, and, and then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask it questions eventually, right? So, um, what have the colonists been doing to make themselves more self-sufficient? Uh, 
Whoops. So given the harsh and inhospitable conditions of LV COMI 7 Hemsit, along with its isolation from Earth and the broader network of human colonies, the colonists have had to innovate and adapt in several key ways to ensure their survival and develop a degree of self-sufficiency. Here are some strategies and developments they might have pursued. Arcology development and expansion. The Greenville Arcology, initially a hub for mining operations and living quarters, would have expanded both in size and function. Recognizing the need for self-sufficiency, the arcology's infrastructure would have been adapted and enhanced to include hydroponic farms, uh, water recycling systems, and energy-efficient living spaces. The arcology would function as a closed loop system, minimizing waste and recycling resources. So this is all, you know, this is good stuff, right? Um, so already, this is, I feel like this is better than Pseudorite um, because it, it basically, it keeps track of all of this stuff. You know, it's like, it's, it's building, we're doing a big, you know, world building exercise for for this you know this world right um and then but you know again um i'm going to be copying all this stuff and then i'm going to be putting it into notion <laughs> um because basically it's so much easier to keep everything organized than going through some giant list of things, you know, that it's just, it's just so much easier to keep everything organized. So I'm gonna do a drop down for innovation and expansion after the fall of the hegemony. Um, so basically in my setting, um, there was a, um, there's a, there was a gate system or there is a gate system that sort of spans the universe or with sections of the Milky Way. And then, um, we, you know, we, we have been exploring these gates and then there's a evidence of these ancient aliens and stuff. All of a sudden something happens, earth is cut off like the gate shuts down to earth and then the rest of humanity that has spread out into space is cut off from earth. And then there's like this kind of, um, apocalypse or not, not an apocalypse, sort of an apocalypse, but it's mostly like just a horrible, um, recession and then like civil war and all kinds of stuff that happens because of earth being cut off from the rest of humanity. Um, so yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put I'm going to put everything in there that it came up with and then um and then I can use this stuff to you know to organize later and um better you know better keep it like use my tags for for characters and stuff like that and then um you know just keep everything organized and do a a pretty good world um, so I can say so let's okay let's let's keep going with this though I'm gonna say um, can you describe a shopping mall inside the um, the arcology's lower levels in a, yeah, a poor, say, poor crime ridden, crime infested <laughs> area. And, and I think that this is great, you know, because it like, it keeps track of everything. It knows what the world is. It knows what the setting is like, right? And then, and it, you know, like if I said, I'm gonna be using Traveler for this, like I'm gonna be using the Traveler engine for this, then it would, um, it would, it would know what Traveler is. You know, it can, it would say, 
oh, you know, using the Traveler engine, like, say that I wanted to set it in the actual official Traveler universe, like, I could say, oh, it's part of, it's over here in the spin work marches, you know, in this section of space, and it, it would probably even know, you know, it might look up, like, the the Traveler map and know where that is and, like, what the alien races are there or whatever. Um, so, yeah, like, the, and then I can say, um, like, I can take a section of this. Like, it's, it, like, it says, okay, shops and vendors. Shops range from small family-run businesses offering basic necessities to black market dealers dealing in, or black market dealers trading in rare tech and contraband, neon signs flicker above doorways, advertising goods and services with desperate brightness, while vendors shout out over the din, hawking their wares to anyone who passes by. The merchandise is as diverse as the population, featuring clothing patched together from scrap materials, bootleg electronics, handcrafted tools, and exotic, if not entirely safe, foodstuffs, right? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to copy all this. Put it into the notion and I'm just gonna call this uh, crime infested shopping mall yeah another benefit of uh, of notion and dark mode I can I can use dark mode actually you probably can't do that in chat GPT I'm not I haven't tried it so I wouldn't know um, All right, so the other thing that I want to try, though, in ChatGPT is um, let's make some characters. So, okay. Can you um, describe some characters for the setting? So I think I'm only, I'm only going to keep one of these. I'm not going to spend you know, 50, well, $40 a month on AI. Um, like if, you know, if this could replace one of like the, the art generator that I like, it probably can't because the one that I like is really ro robust, you know, maybe. Um, but it chat GPT four, you know, $20, that's, that's like, that's kind of expensive, I think. Um, you know, it's doing, it's doing a great job. But still, um, okay, so got some, some characters. I'll put these in with the other ones. Um, let's see how, how it did though. Captain Mara Jensen, role protagonist and captain of a small ragtag crew looking to escape Hemsoot. Background. Uh, a former military pilot with a keen strategic mind, Mara was stranded on Hemsoot after a failed smuggling operation. She's resourceful, fiercely loyal to her crew, and has a personal vendetta against the Arcology's corrupt administration. Personality, Mara is decisive, often taking risks to ensure her crew's safety despite her tough exterior. She harbors a deep sense of justice and compassion. So that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. And it fits the setting more important. Um, it did a really, really good job of sort of chewing on the information that I gave it and then giving me a good character. Um, so having said that, you know, I was just saying that GPT 3.5, or sorry, that paying for four is a little bit expensive. You're going to get really similar results to this with 3.5, which is free. Um, but like, for instance, I can tell it, um, make me a character in this format. Say that I like this format. Um, I can say like, let's make more, uh, characters in this format. Um, yeah, roll.
background, personality. Because I actually do, you know, I do like that that format. So it's just going to keep going with the same list. It's just going to say, okay, yeah, let's we can we can make more characters that are that are like this that fit in with the setting, and uh, and then keep going with um, with that format, right? So already, you know, like I think I was right. I think that that um, the way that I have it, you know, like, I think that, well, I'm, I don't know if Notion is going to be, I don't know if the Notion tools are going to be better than this necessarily, but the thing is, is that using 3.5, I think that we can, we can basically just use the free version to do this. There isn't really a need to upgrade to do this um, because 3.5 is so robust that we don't need four. Um, so if I was going to pay for one, I'm thinking it's probably going to be Notion. Uh, and then I'll, I'll get into, I'll get into why in a little bit. Um, but you know, like a jury's still out, jury's still out. It's still an experiment. We're still trying to, to pick a winner. So we'll see. Okay. So, oh, Mina, Mina Torres. I like that. I like that name. Um, cybernetic engineer and underground doctor. Cool. Cool. Mina is a genius in the field of cybernetics, operating a clandestine clinic that offers medical services and cybernetic enhancements to those who can't afford or don't trust the arcology's off official medical facilities. Personality. Compassionate and driven. Mina is dedicated to helping those in need, regardless of the personal risk. She's innovative and fearless, constantly pushing the boundaries of cybernetic technology to save and improve lives. That's that's good. I think that's really good. I think that's cool. I think it's doing a fantastic job of making characters that really do fit in with the setting. Um, so, okay. But here's what I wanted to try, right? Um... I want to, can we generate, I don't know how to do this in ChatGPT, a portrait of uh, Nina Torres. Ah, cool. Okay, so I just said, can we make a portrait of this character? And then it's it it knew that I wanted to use the AI art, um, and then it's and it's making an image, and it looks like it's cooking it pretty fast too. Uh, so you know, like I, oh, hmm. Let me try it again. It failed, the image failed, but let's see if it fails again. Because if it can do that, then I'd be pretty impressed. You know, if I can say, hey, generate me some characters for this setting, and then can you make portraits for them too? No, that's the second failure. So, I mean, okay, it's trying again, but if it fails a third time, then I don't know. I might I might just give up. Well, what I can do is is uh, plug this in, and then say, you know, can you generate a portrait of this character for me, please? I'm not sure what, like, what's failing, but oh, there we go. Hey, <laughs> hey. That's pretty, pretty dang good. Check that out. Wow. Okay, I'm actually, I'm pretty impressed. That, that is a, 
a strength. That is a definitely a huge strength. That is really cool. Okay. All right. So can save this image and then, um, yeah, <laughs> put it into her, uh, yeah, put it, put it down here. And then I can even, let's see, I can, yeah, put Mina's, Mina's image in there. It actually looks like it's pretty kind of high resolution too. And then the, the art looks good. I mean, that looks pretty good, I think. I actually think that looks really good. So I'm pretty impressed with that. All right, ChatGPT, you're back in the running. Um, so, okay, that's that's really cool. All right, so now, now what I wanna do though, is I wanna get into Notion because I wanna try some of Notion's tools. Um, so let's see, okay, if we say, um, if we go into here, right, and then um, I'm trying to think of what I want. Like, I'll show you one thing that, that is really cool that Notion can do, is we can get it to generate a table. Um, so, okay, check that out. So I, I didn't give it any kind of prompts, right? I didn't say, um, so uh, I want you to do this. I want you to use, you know, like it's a dystopian sci-fi setting. I want, uh, you know, like it, this, it has to be made out of mushrooms or it has to be made out of soybeans or whatever. Um, I just said, you know, Hey, can you um, can you generate a table of some of these trade goods uh, that are available in the Arcology? I even misspelled available, and then it just spit out some stuff. Um, so let's see if I if I ask AI. So say uh, let's see, gen generate more goods for the table and include prices. And use AI. So right away, it just, you know, it, it knew, um, you know, it knew that um, I wanted to, uh, you know, expand on the same the same table, and so I can, and then I can take these, right? Like I can take the whole table, and then I can put it into, or can I? Yeah, I should be able to like stick these together. Like I can take, um, I can take all of these and then put them into the same table and then I can link it up with my database. Um, and then like I could put in here, um, I could put in a, uh, yeah, this is my, my header row. And then I can say, this is going to be the tech level. And, and I would have to go in here and I don't think that it would automatically know what the tech level is of the different goods, you know, or whatever. But um, like I can, say, I can also say, um, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm using the rules for um, 
Traveler RPG. And I need a table of weapons and costs. damage, values, and tech, yeah, tech level. And I wanna see how it does with that. So the, the, the default um, command in Notion is just backslash. So then um, you can go down through the list of things like I can add an image, I can add a drop down, I can add you know links, um, put insert things like PDFs or um, oh wow so, okay yeah yeah I mean it automatically knew that um, you know okay I mean these tech levels don't look correct. Uh, they don't look like they fit in with Traveler. And then the damages, some of them look like they could be correct. I'd have to check. You know, I don't, I don't think that these are correct, though. But um, it's, it's pretty good for, like, if I do say, um, can you generate me a table of the, like, the, the psionic, talents from this tree of, uh, of, you know, such and such using Traveler, or, you know, you could just plug it in there and you could do it yourself, right? Um, yeah, so I have, but I mean, like I, I'm, I'll probably keep this, these tables of the, um, of the, the, the trade goods, right? Uh, because that's kind of, that's useful to me, right? So, like, if I, if, if I, if I knew that I was going to kind of focus on, like, what kind of, um, what kind of, yeah, what kind of, let's see, okay, let's, let's do that. What kind of rare earth elements um, would be found under the arcology and what um, what types of electronics are they used to manufacture in the table format with prices and tech levels. Just use AI. So, okay, at this point, huh, okay failed. I'll try it again. See what happens. There we go. Yeah. And like, and I can say, um, continue writing. You know, I can say, I can say make longer. Oh, it, it regenerated. It regenerated the it just, it, it's, I said make longer, and then it said, oh, you want a longer description. Instead of saying, you know, uh, like I can say, okay, continue writing, just keep going, just give me some more. And it'll keep, you know, it'll keep, um, is it doing any of the same ones? Europium. Okay, this thing over here is going to give me a seizure. Um, but I, I just, I love that it can generate tables. That's awesome. So another thing that, um, uh, another thing that is really cool though, uh, hang on, I'm going to 
organize my stuff a little bit better. So trade goods inside the arcology. And, you know, like just the fact that there's no cutting and pasting, that I can just do all of this in Notion, that's kind of huge to me. Um, so unlike ChatGPT, and then I think PseudoWrite, I'm not sure. I don't remember if they give you a certain amount of free words a month to just play around with or not. I can't remember. Um, but uh, so, but okay, so PseudoWrite, if you saw, you know, if you, if you liked PseudoWrite, um, you can, you know, you can buy a year for like $100 and it's like, you know, $10 a month like it, most people spend that on coffee um so you know twenty dollars a month that's getting that's getting up there right um and then notion you there they give you a certain amount of ai stuff to play with to try it of you know and then and then it's ten dollars a month then you need to start paying them ten dollars a month but you know Man, it sure does make life easier having the, the AI inside of Notion. Um, so, okay, I'm going to turn this into a drop down. Just to keep everything nice and organized. Um, and then, you know, like if I, if I wanted to go in here and then create like pages. For each one of these I could do that like I could say locally produced food and then I want to turn this into I want to make a page for that uh, turn into database and then I want to go into locally produced food and then I want to put in an image of um, some, uh, you know, some some food that's like made inside the the arcology, right? Or like I want to give, you know, I want to um, do like a stat block or something for this character, and so on and so forth. I can do all of that inside Notion. So you know, like Notion, I love Notion. Notion is so good for for this stuff. Um, but another thing that is really cool that Notion can do, right, um, is uh, yeah. So I can say I can say ask AI to um, to translate, you know, summarize, simplify language, make longer, make shorter, or I can just say continue writing. Give it another try. There we go. Yeah, insert below. So it gives you the option of, you know, like I can say, um, hey, can you improve my writing? Can you make this better? Or, you know, like spell check for me or what have you, right? So... I do really like, I mean, they, I, I love that it did a good portrait. Um, you know, like I, I love the, um, I, I love the portrait and it, it looks cool, uh, but I'm not sure that this is worth 20 bucks a month. If it was 10, I would say yes in like heartbeat, right? Um, but so I'm going to pick one, you know, I'm going to pick one. So I love that pseudo write keeps everything super organized, you know, like with the, uh, with like the characters. Um, I wish that I could do locations, you know, um, but you know, that's what, that's what I do in my notion. So that's the thing that notion is just really, really good for is um, is keeping track of everything 
and then I can, you know, drop it down at a glance and then just, you know, it's just easy, <laughs> right? To um, like, okay, let's, let's try to use the AI to, um, to do some locations. Can you uh, make some location the locations for me inside the arcology? I use the eye. I just I love that. All I had to do was make a page, you know, like one page for um, the, uh, you know, for um, <clears throat> the arcology. And then it, it has, you know, it's pulling from everything. It's saying, like, I'll, I'll read these, like, we'll get into it and say, okay, the Nexus, the central hub where residents gather for socializing events and community meetings. It features a large open space with seating areas, cafes, and interactive displays showcasing the history and achievements of the arcology. Tech Haven, a high-tech district dedicated. These are good. I mean, like, you know, obviously you would want to go into these and you would want to edit them and make them your own. Um, you know, like, you could be really lazy about it. And, like, I am being really lazy about it. But... I would go in and I would make them my own. If I was going to use this to write like an adventure, especially if I was going to publish it, especially if I was going to, you know, um, put it put it out there for sale, I would go through everything with a, a fine tooth comb and make sure that it's all up to snuff, um, that it all fits with the setting and that, you know, like you're using it, you're using your own voice and you're kind of going in there and, you know, making it yours. Um, and in fact, I think that, like, drive through RPG, I think that they, you specifically, you have to, you have to do that. Like, they have a rule about not using AI to just, you know, create, like, spam kind of content. Um, but this is good stuff. You know, like this is, I think it's pretty quality. And I'm not just saying that, you know, like, um, okay, a tran uh, the sanctuary, a tranquil sanctuary nestled within the arcology, providing space for meditation, reflection, and spiritual practices. Because I didn't even think of that, you know, like what about spirituality? Like what kind of, um, like I think that we could, you know, we could go into here, we could take, we could make a, um, uh, you know, a drop down for the sanctuary, uh, or you know, like make a page for it, uh, and then we could go into whoops, like take all this. And then we can go in and say, um, Describe how the uh, sanc uh, sanctuary looks. And I haven't even tried these like brainstorm ideas. Yeah, exotic plants, natural elements. So, yeah. Yeah, like, um, what is uh, religion like for people inside the arcology? Yeah, so, I mean, I think I was right. I think that as much as... Um, you know, like ChatGPT, GPT, it's fantastic. It did a bang up, you know, it did a fantastic job 
of making characters. Um, that's something that I didn't try, you know, yet in Notion, but um, I'm just guessing that, that it's gonna come up with similar stuff because it was doing a good job of like describing trade goods and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, technology and food and stuff like that you would find inside the arcology. Um, and here's, here's the thing. So Notion does such an amazing job of organizing everything. And that is huge because once you get a big world going, and then if you have like tables and stuff, and then you have, you know, you have characters and then I can, you know, I can, uh, I can take these and turn them into uh, pages, and then I can say that this is a, um, it's a, whoops, that's not, those aren't my, my templates, my templates, where's my templates? Um, you know, like this is a, like I can, I can say, turn this into a page, you know, I want I want you to sort of flush out this character some more, um, and uh, this is you know like uh, this is this is a, a I can put tags on it. Say like this is an NPC, you know this is an important player character. They're part of the OPA. I can put like the OPA tag on there. I can create a an uh, uh, an OPA page within my Notion. And it's just like, there's just so much more stuff that you can do with Notion. And it's so good at organizing everything. And I don't have to go back and forth and cut and paste from ChatGPT or, um, you know, or Pseudowrite and then put it in here. I can just do it all inside Notion. And then I can say, you know, oh, I didn't like that. Can you, you know, can you regenerate it? Or can you kind of expand on that? And then like, and then, you know, once I have my, my page going, I can say like, um, you know, what's this guy's life like? Like what kind of stuff does he do with his robots, you know, in the mines or, or uh, what, you know, what's his like family life like? Just kind of ask it questions about stuff like that. And it'll just keep fleshing out this character and keep everything organized inside of that's pa that page, you know? So, I mean, pseudo right, yeah, like, the, it it does you know when I say brainstorm, and then you know I say like um, let's make more characters or you know it does have a pretty UI, and it's and it does a good job of right you know it did a decent job of creating things that sort of fit in with the world. I feel like ChatGPT and Notion did a better job of 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 creating things that fit in with the setting creating characters that fit in with the setting. Okay, actually, let's let's try that. Let's try that a little bit. Let's g try that. Try to sort of flesh out this character a little bit more. Um, what is uh, Lucas's life like inside the mines on a day to day basis and I brainstorm so I like that notion also um, gives you like more options to um, like improve the writing or um, create a table or translate this for me. Or, I mean, I'm sure that I could do that in ChatGPT and it wouldn't have a hard time really, but I like that it just has a little drop down. So it seems like it's, it's struggling a little bit right now, but okay, that's fine. But anyways, so those are, that's been my experience. And, you know, like I said, ChatGPT 3.5 is free. And this is not that different from, um, from 3.5. You know, I'm using 4, but 
I'm not really sure what the difference is, except for it might be a little bit faster. The quality seems pretty much the same. And then, it, and then, you know, it adds the ability to do an AI image. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we could get a pretty good AI image with just the description. Um, and then, you know, doing a prompt like that. So, and it would probably be in, you know, you could choose your model and all that. So, so anyways, I'm sticking with my initial ranking. I'm going to say that Notion takes first place. ChatGPT4 takes second place. And PseudoWrite takes third. So I'm sticking to my guns, right? That's how I thought it was going to be. And then I'm sticking to my guns. I'm, sa I'm saying, I'm saying definitively that that Notion takes first place. So anyways, um, yeah, I think that's going to be it. And I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that it kind of gave you some useful information, some ideas, or it's, you know, it's going to help you with um, whatever you're writing next. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.